Okay, this is the Hewlett Packard 97S IO calculator. It's one from my collection that I dragged out the other day just to make sure it's all working and uh, after a, a few repairs uh, it's working well now. So I just thought I would uh, make a series of videos uh, about this calculator and uh, do some basic uh, RPN lessons. Uh, for those that don't know what RPN is, it's the system that the a lot of the HP calculators use. Uh, it's uh, different to your infix notation which is what uh, most people are probably used to that don't use HP calculators uh, and it's the likes of UCASIO's uh, use uh, and fix notation uh, for entering problems and, and whatnot. Uh, whereas the HPs use RPN, which is reverse Polish notation, uh, otherwise known as uh, postfix notation. I, I won't go uh, into uh, the theory of, of that too far, but uh, I'll certainly uh, demonstrate it. Um, just a quick tour of the calculator. We've got uh, on off switch here. And this is the three-way switch for uh, the different printing modes, which I'll, I'll go through at another time. And uh, the program and run switch, which just puts the, uh, the calculator into the programming or the run mode. So you, your normal operation uh, for calculation would be done, uh, this would be set to run. And for inputting and editing programs, uh, you uh, pop across to the programming mode. Uh, you can also save your programs and, and data uh, to cards like these little magnetic strip cards so they feed in here. I'll, sh I'll demonstrate that later. Uh, your display there and printer over here. So yeah let's uh, have a a wee look at um, some basic RPN and general use of uh, this calculator. So I'm just going to run through the uh, HP 97 manual that uh, comes with these units uh, for these demonstrations. So uh, we'll start with the basics with RPN and I'm also going to compare at times with the uh, Casio calculator that I've got here which is the standard in fixed notation that uh, most non-HP users will be used to using so yeah so for, first of all we'll start with a basic problem like 5 plus 6 equals so as you probably know on a standard calculator we would hit 5 and then the operator plus and the second number six and then finish the calculation with the equals equals eleven. So RPN is quite different in that you start off the same with your five and then you enter that five and before I do that I'll just explain a little bit about the the stack okay so uh, the uh, a lot of these HP calculators use a stack where you've got an X register which is displayed and then you have three more registers sitting above it if you imagine little uh, boxes sitting above here so I'll, I'll draw that here so you've got an X register uh, which currently has five in it this is displayed and above it we have another register called Y and then above that we have Z register and then T register. Now when you turn the calculator on for the first time all of these registers including the X register are set to zero so that's the default. So that's the way the stack looks at the moment and um, we can look at that by printing the stack if we print stack now I've taken the little um, plastic, clear plastic cover off the front of this printer because it creates a bit of glare so it's not so easy to see. 
so you can see there that uh, we have five in the X register and the other registers are zero as shown here. Right, so the next thing, so we've got five sitting in the X register. The next thing to do is to enter that. And what that does is it pops, it copies what's in X, first of all, over. So it's, it's copied across here. And then it's also popped uh, five from X register into the Y register. And these are still zero. I'll go a little bit more into the the full workings of the stack uh, later on, maybe in another video, we'll see how it goes. So now we have the, and if I just advance this a little bit to separate it out, and we print the stack again, we now see that we've got 5 in the X, 5 in the Y. Okay, so we've, we've basically uh, got the first part of our equation in. Now we want to input 6. Right, so what that's done is it's replaced 5 in the X register with what I typed in there, which is 6. Uh, this has remained 5, and so of these remained whatever they were before, which in this case is 0. Okay, so now we have the two registers that we want to work with, 5 and 6, and we want to add those. So now to terminate the uh, operation or to, to calculate the uh, result, hit plus and we get 11. So now 11 is in the X register. So what's actually happened there is it's taken the 5 from the Y register down into the X register and added it to 6 to give the result of 11. And so it's effectively been absorbed into the X register and what happens there is the stack drops. Okay, so what was in Y drops down to 6 and gets added. What was in Z drops down to Y, so that drops down to there. And then what was in T drops down to here. And also what was in T is copied to T. So T becomes 0 because it was 0 already. Okay, so if we print the stack again. We should see what we've got there with the answer 11. So that's the basics of how RPM works. I'll go through some more examples here. So the likes of 8 divided by 2 equals, so we input 8. So now, before I do this though, as soon as I hit 8, 11 will be replaced. You don't have to clear. 8 will just go over the top. So now that's just wiped 11 out. And we've got 8 in there now. Okay, so enter that. Brings 8 up into the Y register. And then we hit 2. Puts 2 down into the X register. 8 remains. And then we do our operation, which is divide. Gives us 4. So now the 4 is there. This has been absorbed, uh, so these registers are zero, just like before. So yeah, you can see, uh, yeah, hopefully that's clear enough to um, help you get your head around RPN if you've not been exposed to it before. So next operation, or next uh, demonstration here is 7 minus 4, so it's 7, enter, 4, minus 3, 9 times 8 equals so 9 into that 8 times 72 uh, now these next two examples are uh, examples of where you uh, don't have to enter the uh, the number that you want to operate on so for example if you want to do 1 over 5 or the reciprocal of 5 First of all, you um, you would use this key here, 1 over x, so whatever's in the x register, 5, whatever's in the x register, uh, it will calculate the reciprocal of that. So now, 5 in the x register, just hit that one button and it gives you the answer at 0 0.2.
Okay, same with the likes of calculating sine. So if we want the sine of 30, we just input 30 and hit sine. And so sine 30 degrees equals 0 0.5. So yeah, that's just the um, some more basics there. Now we can progress to a formula here. So we'll take the surface area of a sphere and the formula for that is pi times d squared. So the best way to do this is to square d and then multiply that by pi. So what we want to work out first of all is the square of d. Now the example in the manual here is uh, Ganymede. One of Jupiter's 12 moons has a diameter of 3200 miles. Uh, now we're, yeah, it's a bit old school isn't it? Working in miles but yep yeah, this calculators from 1979 so you know it's close enough and uh, of course you're probably still working in miles if you're from the USA so there you go um, so what we do here is to just put in 3200 miles that's the diameter of the sphere and square that with this key here x squared so whatever's in the x register gets squared and displays the result there at uh, What's that? Um, Ten million two hundred and forty thousand and five hundred and forty thousand. And then what we want to do is we want to multiply that by pi. So next I will, uh, now the shift functions, this yellow key here means once you hit this yellow key it will, and one of these buttons, it will execute what's written in yellow here. So pi is over here on the divide key, or just below. Okay, so when I hit shift pi, it's moved that 10 million uh, up into the y register and it's bunged uh, pi down into the x register there. And of course, the same as what we did back here, we just want to multiply the two, so we now do times and that's the answer of, so that's a, a equals. Three two one six nine nine zero eight point seven eight. Now, so this is displaying to two decimal places at the moment. Uh, we can change the uh, the rounding and the uh, the amount of decimal places that get displayed uh, with the fix button and the display button. So I'll go through that later. So yeah, there we have our first equation, and then you can record that uh, in a program. So I'll go through a little bit of programming and recording that program to a card. Okay, because uh, you, you do want to record these if you're going to use these programs uh, you know, more than once or use these formulas more than once you do want to record them uh, to a card because this particular calculator uh, will lose all of its memory when you turn it off. Um, some of the later models of HP programmable calculators actually remembered the contents of your programs so even when it was turned off so you could turn it back on and run the program. This one doesn't so we need to record our programs. Okay so I'll demonstrate that now. So first of all um, we need to get the program in there. So I'm going to base this program on basically what we've just done here, a equals pi times diameter squared to get the area of a sphere, surface area of a sphere. Okay, so let's start by going into the program mode and you see triple zero there, that's just telling you basically that it's at the top of its memory registers. Okay, and the first thing we want to do is uh, I'll clear any programs that might be in there. I know there's none because I've just turned the calculator on. Uh, but you can clear the programs by this um, CLPRGM clear program button. Which, you know, just do that. And it's, we know now that it's completely clear. And first thing we want to do is we want to label the program. And we'll give, so label LBL. Uh, we're we're going to label it A. And that's nothing really to do with this A up here, it's just a name. It could be B, it could be C, D, E, or a number. Um, but for this demonstration, let's call it label A. 
it's our first one. Uh, so the next operation you want to do is you want to, um, if you have a look back at this formula here, first thing we did was we input D, uh, which was 3200, and uh, with this program what it'll do is it'll take whatever's in the X register, uh, so you would put um, 3200 for instance in the X register be before you ran the program. Uh, so what the program will do is it'll take what's in the X register and if we square that, X squared is going to be our next operation, uh, it will go ahead and square whatever's in the X register. So let's start by giving this a label, so label A and you can see that that's the first step in the program so we had you know uh, 0 0 0 there 0 1 so this will be 0 0 2 3 4 and so on until we finish our program it's not going to be all that long this program so yeah and um, so we've got oh you also see over here these are it's like a key mapping uh, it's um, so what this first set 2 and 1 refer to is the rows and columns of the keyboard uh, so I pressed label first of all to get our label A uh, press label so that's in uh, row 2 which is row 2 and then column 1 is where that button actually sits in this column here so that's 1, 2, row 2, column 1 and A is column 1, row 1 so up here so that's a nice way of correlating what's in the program to where the location of the keys are on the actual keyboard. Okay, so uh, we've got label A in there. Next operation we want to square what's in the X register. Hit square, X squared. Next we want to call up pi. So we want to grab pi, so just literally so these are the same steps as what we went through before when we manually input this formula. Uh, but this is just saving it into a program so that we can put anything into the X register and calculate it. Okay, and then uh, we want to multiply next, so we do times over here. And we might want to print the result, so let's make a print. So that's print, print X, so that's instruction 5. Instruction 6, quite important, is to terminate the program or tell the calculator when the end of the program has been reached. Uh, and it was also used for uh, subroutines as well. So if you had a subroutine in your main program and that subroutine, so obviously you're jumping out to a subroutine and then it executes the subroutine and when it hits return, uh, the calculator uh, jumps back to where it left off in the main program. Uh, so yeah, I can go through that later anyway, so we want to hit a return there, and as you can see it's uh, row 2, column 4, so row 2, 1, 2, column 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 is return, so yep, that's all good. And then um, you can actually, f I'll put return there, you can step through your program, so we're at uh, 6 now, if I hit BST, which is back step, or SST which is single step you can um, cycle up and down so there's uh, print X number 4 was multiply that's pi X2 and label A so we can just go up and down through the program there and when we're ready to run that program we just hit back to run let's clear what's in there just advance the paper a little bit there and uh, Let's have a go at this. So um, now we can put in 3200, and if everything's in order, we should get this result that we got up here when we first calculated the surface area of Ganymede, the moon, uh, at 3200 miles diameter. So now we've got 3200 uh, sitting in the X register. Go ahead and hit A, and there we go. And yes, it's the same. So we have our first program in there. And um, okay, so you could say, okay, here's another moon or whatever you might want to uh, put.
put the diameter of and work out the surface area of the sphere. And you can uh, hit A and Bob's your uncle. I pushed print twice there. Oh, sorry, no, I pushed print again. Obviously, it printed once in the program and then I hit print again. This is the advance button I should be pushing over here. Anyway, uh, yeah, there's uh, 2500 miles diameter. That's the result. So you can put, I don't know, 90. And uh, there you go, there's the result for 90. Uh, you know, I don't know, what do you want to do? Like a tennis ball or something? I don't know what that would be. Try that. 1.385 miles squared. No, too big for a tennis ball. But there you go. That shows you um, what you can do. You just plug in any diameter, and away it goes. Calculates the uh, surface area. Okay, so next is to uh, show you how to save that onto a card. So first thing to do is to um, make sure that the program is set back to the start point uh, and that's just so that the card and the calculator knows to start feeding information onto the card from the start of the program so uh, we use this key combination of um, oops, sorry not that one I'm just going to clear that uh, we go to GTO go to full stop decimal sorry zero 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 and that brings the program back to the start, you can see that there, and then a um, little magnetic card here, feed this in, and uh, there's a tape head, like an old school uh, tape recorder, you know, uh, that you used to see back in the day, uh, for playing cassettes and whatnot, well it looks very much like a cassette tape recorder, so feed this in, side one, it's two sided, so you've got side Sorry, focus. Side one. Side two. Two sides, so feed one in there. Oh, sorry. Got to be over to program for it to write, so it's in program write mode at the moment. And here we have a program written to, to here. And we can... Uh, step through and see that the program is still in memory because we haven't reset the calculator at all uh, but if I go back uh, to program again and clear the program I've got nothing in there and you can see if I single step through it's just uh, 51 I, I think that's just referring to empty registers I think um, yeah so single step you can see it's it's empty I'm going back now right and so there's nothing in memory there now. So go across to run. And now if we feed a card in, the calculator's in read mode, so it's going to read the contents of this. And that's now fed the program into the calculator and we can check that by going across and single stepping through. And there we go, we're back to our six step program. And we can prove that by running the program again. And there we go. So, um, yep, so if we turn it off, turn it on, go to program, it's empty again. But that's no worries. Just go ahead and feed that in. I'm just using the same number. There you go. Yeah, so um, yeah, there's a quick demo of the programming and the card reader. It's just um, simple um, uh, keying in, keying in um, numbers. So uh, a number with a decimal. Let's uh, get in here. So if you want to put in 148.4, uh, you can just do 148.84 easy as that negative numbers if you want to change the sign and make it a negative just hit change sign here nice and easy clear clear x just clears the x register 
Uh, just a, uh, a, a little bit about printing and these three modes of printing. Uh, manual just means that it won't print unless I hit the print X button which will print whatever's in the X register uh, or unless you know there's a print X in the program that you're running okay so and uh, the other the other mode is norm which is normal and that w will print what's in the uh, X register when I perform a, an operation so when I type 5 nothing happens hit enter then it prints 5 enter I'm just advancing that and uh, say we want to add 6 like we did before 6 plus and advance that so it's recorded uh, you know me inputting 5 and entering that and adding 6 to it but it hasn't printed the result as you can see the results on the screen if I wanted to uh, same as in manual I could print X there it prints what's in the X register again the stars just mean that it's the result of this calculation okay now trace mode works differently uh, where it will record more so if we do 5 enter 6 plus it records the result without you having to without you having to uh, hit the print X there so yeah uh, that's uh, the basic uh, settings there for the printer chain calculations um, RPN makes chain calculations uh, quite easy so for example uh, let's do a calculation of 12 plus 3 times 7 okay so normally um, likes of when you would um, solve this manually you would normally work from the parenthesis out and um, so the inner parenthesis even if there's more than one set or they're nested or uh, something like that so in this particular example we calculate um, this 12 plus 3 first so 12 enter 3 plus gives us the intermediate result here of 15 so that's what was in the parenthesis and then times 7 equals so now we just input 7 and multiply gives us 105 here's another one 2 plus 3 divided by 10 or over 10 equals so to start up here, 2, enter, 3, plus, gives the intermediate result. And then we want to divide it by 10, so we put 10 and divide. Okay, 0.5, 3 times 16 minus 4. And there you would uh, start in the parenthesis again, so 16, enter, 4, minus to get the intermediate result of 12. And then you want 3 times 12 into 3 times, and you get 36. And here's one a little bit more complicated. Wow. Slightly more. Minus 2 over 4. Okay, 14 plus 7 plus 3 minus 2 divided by 4. So 14 enter 7 add it, 3, add it, 2, subtract it. So this intermediate result is 22 and we want to divide that by 4 and so we put in 4, divide. Answer is 5.5. Okay, 2 plus 3 times 4 plus 5. So just work we just work our way out again so 2 enter 3 plus gives us 5 so that's 5 times 4 enter 5 add 9 and uh, multiply together to get 45 9 plus 8 times 7 plus 2 over 
4 times 5. So we would uh, calculate the top uh, first. So 9 into 8 plus, same as we did up here, 7 into 2 plus, multiply them together to get your intermediate result of 153. And then uh, 4 into 5 times to get 20. Now what's happened here is when this top uh, row was uh, calculated, 153 uh, actually ended up in the, I'll just draw the registers out here. So we've got um, X register, Y, Z and T or Z if you're in the USA. Z. Okay, uh, so when we did uh, 9 plus 8, so 9 here, and then we, and then we put in 8, and so 9 hopped up here, added them, so 9 into 8, you get your 17 here, and then uh, as soon as I type 7 for this next operation here, the 17 uh, popped up into the Y register and 7 goes here and then I typed in 2 sorry 7 enter now when I did had 7 here and I entered that uh, this in Y register actually popped up to Z register and 7 went into Y register and 2 is now in the X register and then when I add those here 7 plus 2 add those I get 9 so what's happened here is 7's come down and been added to 2 to give us 9 uh, but not only that this here has dropped as well from Z down to the Y register and whatever was in the T register again more than likely it was zero or whatever was in there from previous calculations uh, drops down into the Z register and uh, T is duplicated across to here so that's what the stack would look like at the, uh, at the moment and then we multiply those to get our 153 here and now uh, the registers will look like 153 and X uh, 17 uh, you know has been multiplied by 9 and absorbed so that's now 0 because that's moved down from uh, Z register T has moved down to Z and again T has been duplicated so that's what the stack would look like once we've uh, calculated that top line so now um, we're going to put in 4 4 is now in the X register I'll just start again here just to make it a bit clearer. So we had 153, 0, 0, 0. I've input 4, so um, uh, that moves up to there. 4 sits in the X register. And I want to um, now uh, multiply it by 5. So 4, enter. Uh, what that does is, uh, of course, same as before, 153 hops up into Z, 4 hops up into Y, and uh, then it's ready for us to um, put in the, the 5 here for 4 times 5. So I've entered 4, 5 is now in the X register and ready to be multiplied so here we go we do the multiply right and uh, so 4 comes down and gets absorbed because that's 4 times 5 is 20 1 5 3 comes down from Z register and again uh, T is duplicated and Z comes from T so uh, let's move down there like that okay and then um, so we're in the state here where we've got 153 in the Y register and we've got uh, 20 in the X register as you can see here. Now when I uh, divide this, oh, just show you the um, 
exchange of X and Y registers here too. You can check what's in the X, uh, in the Y register by exchanging with this key here, X exchange Y. And what that does is it exchanges these two registers, X for Y. Uh, so what will happen when I hit X is the uh, X and the Y registers currently have 1, 5, 3 and Y and 20 and X. Uh, you don't need to do this for this particular calculation, but I'm just uh, explaining how this works. Uh, so you might want to check what's in, sitting up in the Y register up here. Uh, so you can just exchange the two and there you go. So now the state is 1, 5, 3 and X because they've been interchanged and 20 and Y. But we want we don't want to divide 20 by 153, we want to divide 153 by 20, so uh, we want to swap them back again. So you can just flick back and forward until the cows come home. Uh, so yeah, that uh, it, so now it's back in this original state, 20, and then we want to divide that. So divide, and there's our result, 7.65. So yeah, there's a uh, little demonstration, we can print that. Well, chain calculations. Quick run through here of these chain calculations. 2 times 3 plus 4 times 5. Pretty easy. 2 into 3 times 4 into 5 times and add those two together. We get 26. Okay, righty, here we go. 14 plus 12 times 18 minus 12 over 9 minus 7 and what do we get so 14 into 12 add those 18 sorry clear 18 into 12 minus multiply those two and then 9 into 7 minus gives us 2 down the bottom here and we want to divide equals 78 okay um, as a comparison um, I'd like to try and do this calculation here on this little uh, Casio and uh, I've, I've practiced this and I, I can't uh, uh, do this equation here without um, having to write down an intermediate result because uh, if you have a look here if we do 14 plus 12 14 plus 12 equals we get 26 for this result here um, now I can't just go ahead and type 18 minus 12 here because we're going to lose what's in the uh, uh, display there. So I whack that into memory and then we can do 18 minus 12 equals 6 and we can multiply this. Now this makes it quite easy. If this was a div divide function here that could make it difficult because um, you'd be dividing uh, this number here by this number once we do the memory recall. Uh, so let's just do this though, times, so 6 times memory recall equals 156. That's great, but um, we can't now just add that into memory by clicking memory plus, because effectively what that's going to do is it's going to add to what's already in memory, which was this uh, uh, initial result here, 14 plus 12. So there's already uh, 26 in the memory now, if I memory plus that it's going to add 156 to it, it's not what we want to do. So uh, effectively you'd have to write down um, the intermediate answer, you know, at 156 and then go back to your little old calculator and yeah, calculate, a nine, calculate 9 minus 7, which you know, okay, 2. So then uh, 156, 156 divided by 2 equals 78. But you can see that um, 
because we don't have the storage registers that it makes it a lot more difficult. Yeah. Pretty much only got one storage register over and above uh, you know, your display here. And uh, you can't easily, easily manipulate that either. You uh, just to uh, add and subtract uh, what's already in the memory with what's in the display. So yeah, you can see how uh, the RPN system is uh, good in that respect for these longer chain calculations. So um, let's do something a little bit more involved there. Uh, so we take square root of 16.38 times 5 over 0 0.05. Okay, so 16.38 into 5 times and then we want to square root this, square root, and then you take uh, 0 0.05 and divide, and you get 100, 181. Okay, so something else we can try here is 4 times 17 minus 12 divided by 10 minus 5. Yeah, so we start probably here with the innermost uh, parentheses here. 17 into 12 minus 10 into 5 minus, divide that and multiply it by 4. 4 times equals 4. Alright, and uh, okay, here's, here's a good one. Square root 2 plus 3 times 4 plus 5 plus the square root of 6 plus 7 times 8 plus 9. Okay, and so we'll start here 2 into 3 plus 4 into 5 plus multiply that take the square root uh, so that's our first intermediate result here and then we just start here 6 into 7 plus 8 into 9 plus multiply them square root and then add the two together 21.57 Uh, yeah, I wouldn't like to have to do that uh, on the uh, on the Casio um, without um, having to write it down. You know, trying to remember those immediate results. My memory's not that great, so uh, yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't like to try that. 